You are watching the Michigan Football Report here on a Friday. We are about 28 or so hours till Michigan heads to Nebraska to take on the Cornhuskers in prime time. And this show is presented by Manscaped. Head over to manscaped.com. Use that promo code GOBLUE for 20% off your order and free shipping on their awesome men's grooming products. All right. We've got a great show for you today. We're going to talk all about this matchup, my five keys to victory. But before we get started, I want to take a pulse of the crowd, pulse of the audience, what you guys are thinking before this game. So let me know. Predict the score, Michigan, Nebraska, the number nine Wolverines. 5-0 in the year, head to the 3-3 three and three Nebraska Cornhuskers. Um... Well, they lost, what, two of the last three games, uh, Oklahoma, Michigan State, then they had a big win against Northwestern, but uh, they could be 5-1 and one right now. I guess that Illinois game, the first one they lost, um, which is really puzzling based on where they are right now. So predict the score down in the comments. I'm going to go ahead and give you my score prediction. It is 24 to 13 is what I believe that Michigan will end up uh, winning this game by a score of 24 to 13. I do think they'll be ready for this uh, this Nebraska offense that's looking a lot better. And Adrian Martinez, who's been there forever, basically, uh, and, and he's really performed well this year. So I think Michigan it will be prepared for him. They'll get just enough on offense to win 24-13. All right, let's jump into the show today. It is my five keys to victory. Michigan, Nebraska, and there's a lot of news that we've got to talk about, a lot of things and intricate details that I want to make sure you guys know about heading into this game. All right, we got the 10 or so, a little few more than that, Twitter followers yesterday, I believe that was yesterday I talked about. So um, didn't have time to put all those together. Uh, Friday's kind of a light day here in the office at Chat Sports. So uh, want to make sure I give everyone their attribution on screen and stuff. So keep an eye out tomorrow after the game. Uh, we'll have our Michigan football Nebraska instant reaction. Uh, I'll give those Twitter shots on that show. And I've got another video for you tomorrow. I'm going to do a morning Michigan football Q&A tomorrow morning on Saturday. So keep an eye out for that one. All right, here's my five keys to victory. We'll start, we'll go through them one by one, and I'll, I'll talk to you uh, uh, different points. So number one, A.J. Henning and Dalen Baldwin must step up. And why must they step up? Well, because they're going to have to be called on for a little more than normal because Roman Wilson, as I said a couple days ago, is not expected to play. The Michigan wide receiver coming off probably his best game, obviously, as a Wolverine six catches, 80 yards last week. Uh, sounds like... On that last, or I'm sorry, that catch he had in the first half, which was, I believe, in the first drive of the first half. I'm sorry, first drive of the second half, where he had to wait on the ball and kind of jump up on it. May have tweaked his uh, his left wrist, I think it was. I'm trying to turn, turn, turn around my way. Yeah, it was left wrist. And um, still played after that, but wasn't uh, um, you know full go in practice all week. And Michigan's going to hold him out for precautions is what it sounds like. Maybe we'll be surprised. I hear he's still making the trip today, so maybe we'll be surprised he gets in uniform. That'd be great, but uh, was limited in practice all week. So A.J. Henning and Dalen Baldwin will be called on to be you know, starting level wide receivers. Now Michigan's down two of their perceived starters, Roman Wilson and, of course, Ronnie Bell. Number two is stop the option. I said in the show earlier this week, Nebraska runs the option more than any team in the Power Five. And I think it's sixth most option. And we're not talking about the spread option, three option. We're talking about run only, kind of triple option or read option where a pass really doesn't come in into play. Uh, they are running it the sixth most time in college football and overall uh, the most in the Power Five. So they really need to stop this. I'm going to talk more about Adrian Martinez here in a moment. But I want to ask you guys this question. Had a lot of debate in the comments on it a few days ago. Who would have won in 97? Fake split national titles for Nebraska, right? They got the coaches poll. It was obviously a sympathy vote for Tom Osborne, who was retiring after that game. Michigan dominated their opponents all year, had more impressive victories. Uh, their only common opponent, Colorado, Michigan won 27-0. Nebraska squeaked by by three points. But give me an M or give me an N, M for Michigan, N for Nebraska down in the comments. Light them up because those Nebraska fans, a little pesky, little pesky uh, commenters on YouTube all week. And uh, I don't want to see too many N's uh, mixed in with the flood of M's. So make sure to flood all of those M's. But this quarterback, Adrian Martinez, he is dangerous. And you might be thinking, well, James, we played this guy before about four or three years ago, 2018. Michigan, where they knock him out of the game, he had like four completed passes. Michigan won 56 points, 56-10 or whatever it was. 
He's no good. He's a bum, isn't he? Well, he probably used to be a bum, and a lot of people called for him last year. He was benched for for certain times, but he is a playmaker now, right? He is getting it done on his hand, you know, with his hand, right, throwing the ball. He's also getting it done with his feet. Uh, fourth year starting quarterback, 68 career touchdowns. Okay, the man has 68 career touchdowns, passing and rushing combined. Uh, this year he's 10 of or 100 of one and 150, 100 of 150 passing. 1,463 yards. A heck of a lot more yards passing than Michigan's quarterback has right now. Six touchdowns, two interceptions, but 80 carries, 412 yards on the ground, folks, with nine touchdowns, um, and five of those have been in the last two games. Had three last week against Northwestern, two the week prior against Michigan State. So he certainly is no one to uh, to take take easy or, or think that maybe he can is someone that uh, Michigan should be worried about because he hasn't performed well in the past against them or you know what we thought about him prior last year so we'll dive more into these stories in a moment but want to make sure you guys know all about manscaped our presenting sponsor go to manscaped.com use that promo code go blue you get free shipping you get 20 percent off on their awesome men's grooming products including the one you see on screen the lawnmower 4.0 it is rechargeable you can take it in the shower with you you trim up downstairs do a little one of these you know uh, all around that area and when you know things come into the bedroom get a little intimate you know it's not uh, one of these kind of like close your eyes for your lady or your guy whatever kind of your know, preference you have there you're clean yeah they're going to be more interested in going downtown and uh, and you'll look better when you're uh, you, you get up afterwards and, and you stand there you see yourself in the mirror it's not just a wildfire like you saw in a uh, 1970s adult movie the uh the lawnmower 4.0 normally 90 bucks you can get it for 71.99 with our promo code go blue so go get started with manscape if you're not manscaping folks you're either using a straight razor and you're getting cuts all over down there or your girlfriend your wife whoever you're dealing with that you know in, in the bedroom they are not happy with your uh your manscaping so get manscape 20 percent off manscape.com slash go blue number three Nebraska actually is a wide receiver who's pretty dang good, and he reminds me in his path and his his uh, his history a lot like Damon, uh, Dalen Baldwin from Michigan. So Samari Torre, I hope I'm pronouncing it properly. I didn't look up the pronunciation guy, um, but he was a baller in, in in at Montana in FCS, and he's had a heck of a year to start this year. Let's take a look at his stats here: 23 catches so far this year. He's got 483 yards. Averaging 21 yards a catch, 21 yards a catch, and he has three touchdowns. Now, he was limited against Oklahoma, for instance. I'm taking a glance at his game-by-game -game stats here. Oklahoma only three catches for 27 yards. Michigan State, five catches for 42 yards. No touchdowns against either one of those teams. So he's beat up on the lesser opponents that they have had uh, last week against Northwestern. Two catches for 80, 100, uh, sorry, two catches for 108 yards, and then had 133 against Fordham, 136, and two touchdowns against Buffalo. But he can go deep, baby. He has three catches of 60 yards or more, which leads college football. I believe we also read he had four catches of 50 yards or more, which is tied for the lead in college football. So he can be a deep threat. He's a little bit of a speedster. And take a look at these stats. This is this is crazy, right? Two years ago, he didn't play in the 2020 season. So two years ago, he had 87 catches at Montana FCS. Um, the the official you know all, all American stuff was he was a third team All American, but a couple publications made his first team. 87 catches, 1495 yards, 13 touchdowns two years ago at FCS Montana, and I think they got to put Daxton Hill on him to limit him. So I'm calling on Daxton Hill to you know had a great second half last week against Wisconsin. Kind of got burnt a couple times in that first half. But I think if Daxon Hill can shadow him, can stop him, I trust Daxon Hill more than anyone else that Michigan has in the secondary to limit him to those best, you know, those deep passes. Dax Hill is probably the fastest player on defense. And so I am calling for Daxon Hill to limit this ground, you know, green breaking wide receiver that has the longest touchdowns of 60 yards in America. All right, we've been talking about these guys for a couple weeks. Again, I saw some people getting a little heated in the comments. I have no beef with Michigan podcasts. I don't really care about them. I'm sure their show is entertaining. I don't watch it personally, but um, they've done a good job. They've been out there for several years. But we are within striking distance of having more subscribers than them. And as a competitive guy, I, I'd like us to get there. It would be a, uh, a nice thing to see this channel grow over the last couple years and catch up. They've been, you know, had a channel much, much longer than us. So it's youtube.com slash Michigan TV. Uh, they've got 15,551. We have 15,208. So about 350, give or take uh, 10 or so uh, subscribers from Catching Michigan Podcast. So if you've subscribed to the show in the past and you like what we do, um, 
send the, the show to a friend. Say, hey, press press subscribe on this, these guys. They, they do a good show, uh, Yoder and the Michigan Football Report. If you subscribe to Bull Chales, great. I hope you like our stuff, but keep watching his stuff too if you've been entertained with him in the past. Number four. This is to you, Jim Harbaugh. This is to you, Michigan coaches and staff and players. Act like you're at home. Nebraska's a, a college football blue blood. They're one of the best programs of all time. They've won national championships in the 90s, three of them, well, two and a half of them. In the 70s, they're one of the great programs in college football history, and they've got a great home atmosphere. It's a diehard atmosphere. It worked in Wisconsin, folks. They acted like they were home. Michigan wasn't intimidated by the moment. They came out with life. I've seen too many times under Jim Harbaugh, Michigan's gone on the road and came out with no life, acted like they were at a funeral and not a big-time college football game. Nebraska's got this thing at night where the whole stadium lights up red, and it's crazy right before the start of the fourth quarter. Michigan should be doing the same thing then that they did against Nebraska, just jumping around, embracing it, going nuts, going crazy. And if you're feeling loose like that, you wear your home underwear, you, you stay at a, you know, whatever you'd like to do, take your pillow with you on the road, uh, wear the blue pants. Those seem to work out well. And I think Michigan will be just fine if they cannot get the jitters that Jim Harbaugh seems to have that's infectious amongst this team. Next up, we need 225 yards rushing is the number I'm putting on Blake Quorum and Hassan Haskins going into this game. I think we hit that number. Um, the stats for Jim Harbaugh are staggering when he actually uh, leads the, you know, his team leads in rushing, when they score over 30 points. It's like if Michigan doesn't commit turnovers, they run the ball over 200 yards, and you know, if they score 30 points, they're just basically going to win the game. And so I'm calling on Hassan Haskins, Blake Quorum, to get your mojo back from the first three weeks of the year. Uh, here are the stats right now. It's kind of a starter by, by committee, by duo right now. 80 carries for Haskins, 83 for Corum, 518 yards. Obviously, Corum has been more effective. Yards per carry, 6.2 to 4.6. And they're both right there. Six touchdowns for Haskins, seven for Corum. But Corum hasn't had a touchdown in the last two games, right? He had seven touchdowns uh, rushing in the first three games, one receiving, but out of the end zone the last two weeks. So I ask you guys this question to end the show today. How many rushing yards will Michigan have versus Nebraska on Saturday, on tomorrow, Saturday night in Lincoln at Memorial Stadium? Go down and predict in the comments how many yards you think Michigan will have, and we will see you guys back tomorrow morning for another episode of the Michigan Football Report from Chat Sports. Until then, go blue.